So in the new one, Stephen, Roma, what happens? What's it about? Roma is a, uh, it's called the epic novel of ancient Rome. I've, what I've tried to do is to tell the story of the first 1,000 years of Rome, from its very beginnings as an Iron Age crossroads for traders, to its rise to be the capital of a world empire under Julius Caesar and uh, Mark Antony, Pompey, those people. Uh, because before the time that most people are familiar with, the age of Caesar, there's a thousand years of history full of amazing stories and, and characters. Where do you find this? Where's your research done? Well, fortunately, we have the ancient historians themselves. The, the primal one is Livy. And the ancient Roman historians, they wanted to write page turners. So the source material is by no means boring. They sort of picked out the most salacious stories, the most amazing stories, stories of gods and humans and horrible choices, and uh, the warfare that made Rome into a world empire. So we go to Livy and the other primal sources and uh, spin a story, which is uh, it's actually about uh, a single bloodline through time. So it's a multi-generational family saga. We know from Livy the names of the very first families in Rome. So those are the people I chose to be my main characters over the course of a thousand years. And when you read these sources, do human beings change much over this time? You might be surprised at how much human beings stay the same in their passions. Uh, they're driven by the same things. The, the Romans are particularly stern and aggressive people, especially in these early days. It seems that moderns are more uh, attracted oftentimes to Rome's height. We think of decadent Rome. We think of beginning in the time of Caesar, civil war, grand ambitions, that gives way to the emperors and their licentiousness, orgies, all of that. That seems to be what modern Americans and Britons are oftentimes most interested in. But before that, there's a thousand years of empire building, and those people are much sterner, they have a, a very harsh existence, they're very warlike, and uh, they face some amazing choices in their lives. You have been into this time and place before, as a source for your fiction. Is there enough to keep you going? Oh, absolutely. I, uh, my previous books have been in a series called Roma Sub Rosa, which have been crime novels, mystery novels set in ancient Rome in the age of Caesar. I have a sleuth named Gordianus who goes around solving all kinds of heinous crimes in Rome. Um, and part of the pleasure of writing this book was to kind of understand where his world came from. This is the backstory, the thousand years that leads up to the more famous era of Rome. Um, I, the fascination of Rome is so endless that I, I don't think in my lifetime I will ever exhaust it. And it permeates our existence now. Every time, we've, every time we chant the months of the year, we are genuflecting to our Roman past, aren't we? Absolutely. I'm, I'm sort of happy that in the UK the book was published on the Ides of March. That's a great date. And it's interesting, everyone knows the Ides of March. And the reason is, it's one of the fulcrums of history. And it, it's the climax of Roma, actually. The assassination of Caesar is such an important event uh, because it changes the world forever. So what the Romans did and the story of their story is still affecting us today. Stephen, finally, are you an educator or are you an entertainer? I want to be both of those things. I, I am serious about the history. And one of the reasons is, these books are published in 18 languages now. Uh, so that if I make an error in the history, I will hear about it on publication day. Someone will go to my website, stephensailor.com, and send me emails saying you made a mistake. So I've learned not to make historical mistakes. I want to be as authentic to the history as possible. But at the same time, I want to write novels that will grip people, that they'll care about the people, that they'll be truly drawn into the past uh, as a living, breathing pl place.